to some houses to make sure that they came out for the funeral. The Gunn family obviously were very, very popular on the Bestwood estate. You know, they'd lived there all their life. So it didn't really come as a surprise to me that there'd be so much outpouring of grief. Jamie was clearly a favourite of Colin Gunn, and we know that the death of Jamie Gunn hit both Colin and his brother and the community in Bestwood really, really hard, and it really did stir up some feeling within that community. Detectives investigating the Stirland murders began going through hours of footage from security cameras in the area. At Ingermells near Skegness, about 12 miles south of the crime scene, the cameras showed Colin Gunn and two of his associates, Michael McNee and John Russell, at a caravan park where the Gunn family had a van. It put them in the area that weekend, but proved little else. The breakthrough came on CCTV in Mablethorpe, a mile and a half from the Stirlands bungalow, where Colin Gunn is seen here in the main street. But this time, he used his mobile phone. Police had the precise time of the call from these pictures. By analysing phone records, they could identify the phone he was using and the numbers that he called, including mobiles belonging to the two henchmen seen at the caravan park. Detectives could track their movements using the signals sent from the phones to nearby masts. The 80-mile drive from Nottingham to the coast, trips to Trusthorpe, and a high volume of calls at all times of the day and night. They were piecing together extremely small parts of the jigsaw, mainly from forensic evidence, and by forensic evidence I mean perhaps the obvious fingerprints DNA but also mobile phone usage, tiny snippets of CCTV footage from caravan site from public CCTV. And by doing this, they put together a jigsaw which created the picture of how the murder was carried out and put Colin Gunn and associates very near to the scene. After eight months of assembling this digital puzzle, police decided they had enough to arrest Colin Gunn. He'd been arrested today on suspicion of the murder of um, Joan and John Sterland. Can you tell us where you were on the 8th of August, which is a Sunday? This is the day that Mr. and Mrs. Sterling were killed. For someone like Colin Gunn, being arrested is an occupational hazard, and uh, from his behaviour, um, he didn't display any sign of concern. His expectation may well have been that he'd be interviewed, released on bail, uh, and that would be that. He was subjected to over 11 hours of interview, during most of which uh, he said absolutely nothing in response to the questions and the evidence being put to him. The bottom line is, Clive, we believe that all roads lead back to you and your family that are behind this, the killing of Mr. and Mrs. Sterland. It was a, literally an assassination. Is there anything you want to say about the events of that weekend and the, and the days leading up to the killing? He said a few things fairly briefly right at the end of that process. Um, and they were more a brief statement of his position in respect to the evidence that had been put to him rather than, you know, throwing his hands up to confess or anything like that. Do you want to say that? I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. I was up the coast with my family and friends. I met family and friends. I went to different parts of the coast. And that's all I've done. All I've done is gone down the coast I travelled about the coast because I was on, on, on holiday, which I do most weekends because I've got a van down there. And, you know, it's not unusual for me to do exactly what you're saying I did. My mum's got a place, like you say, right near there. Unfortunately, my mum's place happens to be right near to where it happened. But that don't, that, that don't mean that has anything to do with me. It's just that's where my mum's place is situated which is where a lot of the activity that you're suggesting I was doing was around, but that's because my mum's place is there. My nephew had just died. My mum's grieving. To be fair, though, um, we felt that um, with a combination of other things taking place at around the same time and the product of the inquiries that had taken place previously, we were hopeful that we would be in a position to charge him without having to depend on anything he said in an interview.
I mean, I'm shocked that you've got me an accusing me of these things just on the nature of, of, of what you're suggesting. Is, is just phone calls. We put you the scene of the crime at the right time, haven't we? You can put my phones, if they're on my phones, in the area. Well, what we're saying, Colin, is that there's not only your phone in that area, but there's also McNeese's phone in that area. Well, but if, if, in that area. If you had all the material time, if you, if you had a little chap here, sat here, you'd probably get his friend's phones. We've told you what we think, and we've told you what the evidence is. That's well, it's not evidence, is it? We, well, it is evidence, yeah. Following that process, he was charged with the offence of conspiracy to murder. At that point, he still remained fairly cool, fairly calm and fairly collected. But I think the process of being taken to Lincolnshire firstly and then being charged will have both been surprises to him. Meanwhile, the net was closing on corrupt cop Charlie Fletcher. The untouchables hidden inside Project Starburst had cloned his computer so they could see everything he was doing. They continued to monitor his phone calls to his contact behind the racks of Armani suits at Limey's clothes store. After months of surveillance, they moved in on Fletcher. At his home, they found further evidence, reports and documents that Fletcher should not have had in his possession. We will never definitively know whether or not Charles Fletcher um, joined the police service as a corrupt officer or joined innocently and then became a corrupt officer. What we do know is that the corrupt network that he belonged to um, had relationships between him and other people that pre-existed his time in the police service. We know that for a fact. Turn your engine off, mate, police. The team investigating corruption had also found another bad apple. Vice Squad Officer Philip Parr, seen here in a television documentary promising justice to those who break the law. The main uh, responsibilities of our unit is to target the curb cause. So it, it is quite clear, you come to Nottingham, you're going to get prosecuted. Parr would now be prosecuted for passing sensitive information to Colin Gunn. But the biggest trial that lay ahead was the Stirland murder trial. Colin, his older brother David, and six other men stood accused of plotting the couple's execution. It was a trial that would end in a riot. He's got a white top on with dark sleeves. He has changed that shirt in the last five minutes. That lad wants nicking as soon as we can get in there. In March 2006, crime gang boss Colin Gunn, his brother David and six other men went on trial at Birmingham Crown Court, accused of plotting the execution of a middle-aged couple. John and Joan Sterland were gunned down in their bungalow, where they were in hiding after Mrs. Sterland's son tried to assassinate a member of the Gunn family. There was no evidence as to who pulled the trigger, but a jigsaw of CCTV, mobile phone calls, text messages and other forensic evidence put Colin Gunn and two associates in the area on the day of the murder with a motive. Colin Gunn lost control twice during a trial lasting more than three months for conspiracy to murder, once when the verdict of guilty was returned and he directed a, a stream of obscene abuse at the jury, particularly the jury foreman, uh, saying things like, I hope you die of AIDS. The second time was when he was about to be sentenced by the judge and a similar stream of obscene abuse towards the judge. Uh, he was directed to be taken from the dock and he was sentenced in his absence to life imprisonment, a minimum 35 years. The jailing of Colin Gunn provoked a riot on his home estate. The community's just got together and absolutely fuming. 35 years! Police wearing riot gear keep their distance, cordoning off both ends of the roads to prevent the violence from spreading. He's got a white top on with dark sleeves. He has changed that shirt in the last five minutes. That lad wants nicking as soon as we can get in there. What you hear in the paper and the people think this, people think that, it's a load of crap. Excuse my uh, French. We it's a load of this. crap. He took guns off people, didn't he? Yes. Not Victoria. Yes, he if did. people was known to be running around this estate with firearms, Colin took him off it. <laughs> Colin Gunn looked after everybody on Bestwood. If it wasn't for him, it would be like this every night. He is innocent. He's a good man.
if you want to try and put some kind of moral spin on what he did, then you've got to go and tell that. You've got to go and justify that to the widows, uh, to the uh, to the mums who've lost their sons. You've got to go and tell that to all those grieving people who are who have been the victims of the evil that Colin Gunn has brought about this city. Got reputations in our land. That don't mean he caused all the trouble in. There's trouble no heroin on this estate. There's no heroin on this estate because of him. There will be heroin addicts um, in this city who would not be heroin addicts had it not been for the activities of Colin Gunn and his business. There are people whose health has been irrevocably broken down where that would never have happened had it not been for Colin Gunn. It's all based on lies, it's all a load of rubbish, and when I take it to the High Court in London, it can be thrown out and it'll be home where it belongs. Michael McNee and John Russell were given long sentences for conspiracy to murder the Stirlings. The other defendants, including Colin's brother David, were cleared. Why had Colin Gunn become so personally involved in the hit on the Stirlings? Revenge is a powerful motive especially in the code of the underworld. If it's personal, you can't let it go. It, it, it'll be like a cancer, it'll eat you alive. When you get in a position of power, you, like most leaders, you, you can give the order. It's easier done, and then you're away from it, you're on holiday, you've got, you got, you got your alibis and everything. But if it's personal, well, you've, if it's personal, it's got to be done. And if you've got to be involved and do it yourself, well, then that's the way it's got to be. Then you've got to look over your shoulder and think, well, I'm now looking at prison, losing my life, everything I've built up for, everything I've gained on the street, all my power, position, money, wealth, it's gonna, you're going to throw it out the window. But if it means that much to you, then that don't mean nothing. You've got to do it. Gunn was given a further nine years for infiltrating Nottinghamshire police. His main informant, Detective Constable Charlie Fletcher, 